meet you all. There are lots and lots of familiar faces and a couple of new ones. And it's kind of my pleasure to announce our first kind of international speaker with the Finnish name, because he's called Marco with the K. And I don't actually know where you're from. Uh, actually, it's more of a country in South Europe, Serbia. All right. That's we have been in Serbia now. Work up Europe. Yes, of course. Yeah. How many of you went to work up Europe or something? Yeah, so we, we kind of know you in that sense. Well, if you been to the Kodari stand, there was like a lot of us. So. Okay. Okay. so, about the topic, I kind of tried to yesterday evening a little bit summary about the topics we have today. I'm like, you know, I'm lots of different kinds of topics today, and I really hope you can enjoy most, most of them. And Marco is going to talk to you about how to measure, analyze, and optimize your WordPress website. I think it's kind of involves with Google anal Analytics and how do you actually use that data kind of in, in some way that it's useful your your website and that's just install like and forget it. So please welcome Marco, give it applause for you. Thank you guys, thank you everybody. Uh, well, I'm going to use Google Analytics among other tools. Uh, we have a really short time, so I'm going to just jump into it. But before I start, uh, hi, my name is Marco. As you heard, I come from Serbia. I work for GoDaddy, but I'm also a member of our local WordPress community. And as you know, probably those of you who came to Belgrade uh, this year, we had a board camp organized there, so we were kind of organizing this year. Uh, so before I start, one important thing, if anybody wants to have this presentation, you don't need to write anything down, it's been shared on this address on the bottom, so you can focus on listening and uh, let's just dive into it. So uh, before uh, I want to talk about optimization or even before analyzing, I want to tell you that the first step, it's not just diving right in, it's knowing what to look. Uh, so it's not just the data that you have, it's not, uh, let's just have it and say, for instance, if you say, I have 10,000 visitors, is it good, is it bad? Uh, before we can answer those questions, we got to know what questions to ask. So what are the right questions? So before we then jump into analytics, uh, uh, before we jump in a specific website, it's always better that we first focus on the business itself. So let's understand why is the website there? What's the goal of the business? Is it to sell the product? Is it an e-commerce website? Is it your personal website? Are you looking to get more customers? Are you looking to get more visitors? Is it something that you want to sell your music to present yourself? So we always, before we start diving into analytics, before optimizing the website, before we're jumping into performance, we first have to know what is the reason behind the website? What's the goals? And once we have answers to the questions, it's important to write them down so we know what we're trying to answer. So, let's dive in. Before we jump into actually analyzing anything, <coughs> let's write down the goals and then let's have some sort of measurement plan. Don't just go in there and don't just dive into data without understanding what we're trying to achieve. Have a plan. Write down the goals, define how you're going to drive those goals. So what is the key things of what's important for us? Is it the number of visitors? Is it the number of sales? Is it maybe some other goal that we're going to try to achieve with our website? Visibility, accessibility. Write them down and then have a plan to check that regularly, monthly, weekly, depending on the website, depending on the business goals. Is it your personal or is it your clients? And then once we measure and analyze what we have, compare them with the results. So our first stop is Google Analytics. Before that, I'm going to have this quote from Peter Drucker, which is a famous uh, management expert. What gets measured get managed. Managed. Uh, if we don't measure anything, if we don't know what's going on, uh, hardly we can measure it. Hardly we can improve it. How to improve something that we don't even know in the state that we're in. So, um, how many of you are using Google Analytics? Almost everybody. That's awesome. You, usually it's much more fewer <laughs> bad people. 
So glad that you are using it. For those that don't, it's a, web, a website from Linux tool. So basically, it gives you information about your website, how it works. It tracks everything that's going on from the user side to tracking the users through a small JavaScript and probably tracking all their actions and turning those clicks, those actions into data, gathering it, and then analyzing that data. So it tracks a lot of data about your website and what's going on, not everything, and I have to stress that, it doesn't track everything. Uh, and then it turns that data into measurable information and into insight. And that's something that you can use. That's something that's useful to you. So information in itself is not that useful. I had that many plates for that many cookies. Not that useful. But if you know something more about it, then you can actually do something about it. And what's best, it's mainly free. So for you that don't have it, you can open your Google Analytics completely free. You just go to your for to this Google Analytics address. There has been some changes, but it's still easy to find. And once you open your Google Analytics account, it's time to put it on your website. So for the interest of getting into details or not, how many of you have gone through this process of integrating Google Analytics in the website? A bit fewer people, but still a lot. Yeah, well, I, I need to jump. Uh, there are a couple of uh, ways that you can integrate Google Analytics. Basically, once you fill out your basic information website, you put the code to your WordPress website, and there are a couple of ways. Um, these days, the teams themselves actually support to integrate the Google Analytics, you just need to enter your account or your key. Uh, you can also use a plugin. Uh, most popular one in Brooksville well, is Monster Insight plugin to integrate in Google Analytics. You can insert the code manually, and I actually prefer that and recommend that. Or you can use a third party solution like Google Tag Manager that gives you much more flexibility once you have it installed on your website. Um, I caution you against the first one, team supported, because once you change teams, you probably will lose that Google Analytics, and that's something you really should think about in advance. Or even your clients may want to change the team, change the team, it loses all the analytics. So the best integration is to a plugin or to put the code yourself. And then you can track the results by accessing Google Analytics. So uh, the goal. Today, when I talk about Google Analytics, is to turn the data information and information into insight. Why is this so much important? Information is great, but you really need to know what to do with it. Google Analytics has a lot, have a lot of information, it serves a lot of information, but most of the people don't access even 20% of it. And in all fairness, you probably don't need it. For a regular blogging website, maybe the number of visitors, how is it changing, where they're coming from, what's their demographic, is something that you need for a e-commerce website, where you have a sales functionality, process functionality, it get, things get much more complicated, and the insight about what to do or what opportunities do we have is really crucial. So what can we measure with Google Analytics? I kind of divided this into four big categories, I don't want to go into any of them much more deeply because we have a limited time, but you can track user information, marketing performance, so your digital marketing, SEO efforts, connectivity, referrals, website performance, which is usually the one category people kind of overlook, you can track some with true Google Analytics, and finally business results. So again, I will not get into any of this, if you're interested, just dive in, but what Google Analytics gives us is the information about our users, a lot of information about their users. So where are they coming from? Uh, what's their age? What's their gender? Uh, what language are they using? Are they coming from a laptop? Are they coming from a desktop? Are they using a mobile device? There is a lot of information about the user itself that can actually help you to adjust your site. So when we're talking about optimizing, it doesn't necessarily mean just the performance, just the speed. It means optimizing it for your users. So if it's your goal to get much more users and you build your website primarily for desktop and it turns out a lot of users come to mobile, the first thing that you need to optimize is not speed, it's actually have a mobile version and vice versa. For instance, our website, our service is actually primarily desktop based. So 
And we also have user behavior, what they do on your website, and again, website performance, what users do, what pages do they see, where they come from. You can actually track site speed and site and experiment with different pages. And you can also analyze your marketing performance, so where your traffic comes from, and set up goals and funnels. So this is a key to track conversion, to track the meaningful actions on your website that's meaningful to you. So these are some Google Analytics tips and trips. I'm going to just to fly through them. But you can have multiple views, always exclude yourself. Use segments when analyzing, so people that want something that are specific segment, male users, female users. Uh, there's an option to set up custom dashboards, and that is a super useful feature for everybody that's using Google Analytics. Basically, you can build your own set of things that you want to track. You don't have to go each time and waste 20 or 30 minutes of your time jumping from one report to another. You can actually make your own, and it's super simple. There's even a solution gallery that may cover your case. Uh, you can also schedule email reports, and I would also, also recommend to optimize alerts. So if, for instance, performance of the website or page loading drops under a certain value, you can immediately get an email explaining, hey, for some reason, your website is getting really slow. Not everything that can be counted counts, and not everything that counts can be counted. That's also connected to Google Analytics. Um, it's also a famous book made by Albert Einstein. Uh, so why do I say this? Google Analytics tracks a lot of things about your website, but let's say performance in itself is the biggest link. So usually you have to re rely on some other software or other methods to actually understand the performance of your website before you can actually dive into the optimization itself. And here is a couple of tools I actually find most useful to track those missing pieces. So, Google Analytics tracks a lot about your website, but in this area it's a bit weaker. So, I actually recommend a couple of tools. There is, um, again, it depends how much you want to dive deep into it, what's your specialization. Uh, do you want to be super technical or do you just want to improve a few things for your clients or yourself? So, there are full website auditors that actually kind of nibble at, at everything and give you insight what could be improved. Is your social connected? How's your website performing? Do you have errors on your website? And there are a couple of them. The uh, most easier one is HubSpot's website creator. Nibbler is a great second choice. I love it because it covers a lot of ground. So it goes into your social, your code, your speed, uh, any errors. How is your website used? Uh, is there any issues? And this two validator is more of like code check just to make sure that you don't have any, uh, any big errors. For performance, there is a lot of tools, and again, these are basic tools. I didn't have the time to actually present the workshop with a real specialized one, but probably most useful to you would be Pingdom Tools, GT Metrics, and Google Page Speed. Uh, Pingdom Tools is a free, uh, you can actually choose a place to test your website from, and uh, you, uh, you can see a waterfall of your website loading, that way you know what you need to improve, what takes a lot of time, is a problem with your server, do you have a lot of content, is something working better. GT metrics go into much more detail and gives you much more meaningful report. And Google Page Speed is actually my preferred one because they actually give you recommendations about what you can change on your website. So please test it out if you haven't already, again it's free. You just test your website and it gives you, do you need to change the script, do you need to improve, is it something the hosting needs to be addressed to, please check it out. And for the SEO, again, there's quite a lot of checks. There are online checks, so like Salesite Chatter, Urang, Neopata, SEO Analyzer, or you can use some spe specialized software or services that go way beyond what we talk about here, so that there's specialized services like IPRFs or MOS, or even a self power suit that goes really, really deep into analyzing, playing competition, everything. And for security, I recommend a security scan to test your site's vulnerabilities, or a security scan to check for malware, or if your site is backlisted or hacked. And to kind of finish this, most of the role of domain decision I will be in using their guts, they'll be either lucky or wrong. I recommend you not to try to be lucky, 
bot to understand your website and you can analyze it, you can measure it with Google Analytics, with other tools. Once you get measures, you know what to improve. There are certain softwares today are really smart, they can actually give you recommendations about what to improve. So, my tips for actually measuring, analyzing, and optimizing your website using one of these tools or some other is have a plan. First, have a plan. Trust me, I've been doing this for more than 10 years. Uh, measure, analyze, and then optimize, but use priority. If you can really go wide and waste a lot of your time if you go try everything. Watch out for vanity metrics, so those metrics that sound wow but are not really important. Document the process, create, create your own checklists, because that will be important. Uh, if somebody actually needs to take part of your work, or just in case you don't forget it after doing the same thing for 100 times, trust me, it's easy to forget about thing or two thinking you already did it. And always test your hypothesis, trust in data you get from these services, but always verify. Quite often they can show you some result that's not really accurate. And that's it for me. Thank you, everybody. Hope this at least was somewhat useful to you. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Unfortunately, we don't have time for questions for these lightning polls. But I'm sure that you are more than happy to answer any questions like we have, we have coffee breaks and stuff like that. So yeah, if anybody wants to ask anything, I'll yeah.